Mm -hmm. So why does it matter to an investor though? Well, it matters a lot to the investor for a few reasons. One, uh, confusing credit conditions with uh, economic conditions um, is very serious. So the, the worst thing that, it, so in general, the way you lose a lot of money in the stock market is by buying a bad business during times of loose credit, overwhelmingly. That's how people lose a lot of money. So you buy a marginal business, you buy something that isn't really much of a business and stuff, and you buy it during loose credit. Almost no one will do that during times of tight credit. So it's not a problem. So like in um, the 20s and stuff, if you're talking about periods from like 26 to 29 or something, that's when it would have been a problem for mm -hmm. people buying worse and worse things then. Uh, in the 1990s and stuff, there would have been problems. One tricky part is when we talk about credit conditions and stuff, I do want to point out that it's not an issue of how high or low interest rates are. Um, at times, credit can be very difficult to obtain when theoretically interest rates are incredibly low. Um, but it may be that no one wants them or that the people who want them, the firms that want them are not, um, uh, good enough credit risks to be able to get them. Uh, so that does happen a lot. So what do you mean by that then? Is it like the bank's willingness to, yes. to extend so we've, money? We've talked about it before. It's very important when we talk about credit conditions and stuff. The Fed does not set credit conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, even something like saying in negative interest rates are not appropriate for the United States. Well, <laughs> the Fed doesn't set all interest rates all the way along the curve at all you know, things. So it can't avoid a moment of negative interest rates necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, but credit is something that Gen well, a good example is we can talk about the payroll protection uh, stuff and all sure, that, right? Yeah. So that's a good example. Um, the Fed can't directly deposit money in all sorts of people's accounts. Many people don't have accounts. And um, many firms don't have banking relationships existing already. So the Fed could very quickly uh, do things to, if you want to call it bailout, provide tons of liquidity to huge firms. But it can't to very small firms. Mm -hmm. And that actually is like the 30s. That is a problem. That very small firms, it's very hard to get the money. Um, and that's true now. I, I don't know how people know how to bail out a individual one person running a nail salon or a barbershop or a restaurant or whatever. And, and that's generally, so when you have a credit crisis, what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to lend a lot, lend very freely to those borrowers who are in most desperate need for it, who would otherwise start acting in a depression mindset, liquidating things and stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you have a problem in like housing or something, what theoretically you should do is not lower interest rates across the entire economy and stuff. What you should do is lend huge amounts of money to homeowners who otherwise will um, try to sell their homes or will be evicted or things like that. It's very hard to do though. Mm -hmm. So historically it's been much easier to do it in certain other ways, which has effects like making stock markets go up, whether you wanted it to do that or not, just because that's a faster place for the money to get in. When we talk about inflation and stuff like that, same thing. What happens is it affects different parts of the economy differently because of the speed at which it can get into those things and to some extent the willingness and stuff. So you have stock markets go up or treasury markets and things like that respond immediately to something that you're doing when that wasn't your intent. Like say you wanted to have an effect on car markets or uh, housing markets or something. It's much tougher to do that. Um, because it'll have an effect that's much slower versus what you're doing and much less necessarily that you can guarantee it will happen versus things that happen in the markets that we focus on. So I think a lot of times people think the intention is to affect the financial markets when that's not necessarily what the intention was and not what they were going for. Okay, so then in this period of loose credit though, right, right, which we're in, by the yes. way, how does the investor make money? Right. So the, the first thing is you have to avoid is that it's you could lose a lot of money in certain things. OK. So generally, you don't want to bet on certain things that seem very sure but are dependent on credit. As an example, people have asked, like, have I owned a net net that went bad or something? Yes. Mm -hmm. I owned a net net with a catalyst. It was going to liquidate. And I lost like everything in it because this happened during the 2008 financial crisis. So there was plenty of credit available at the time I bought the net net. And it needed credit to go through the process of liquidating to sell off its inventory and stuff in an orderly fashion. Mm -hmm. However, credit seized up. You can't have an orderly liquidation. And instead, you end up with nothing for the shareholders and, and a bit of a haircut probably for the people who had various kinds of debt and stuff in the stock. So that's how you can lose a ton of money. So buying into things that are involved in anything like that. Um, it can even be things like arbitrage and stuff. Those will go badly if you happen to. It's very dangerous to buy into arbitrage situations and stuff during a time of 
loose credit mm -hmm. because they may all fail together if credit tightens, which is most likely to happen. Um, so that's why you want to avoid those things. So you want to be very careful about things in which the margin of safety is less, anything that depends a lot on credit, stuff like that. You also want to remember that anything that depends on credit means that everyone doing the same thing, if they're borrowing to do it, will all stop doing it at the same time too. That's why I give the example of arbitrage. Mm -hmm. The results are much worse for arbitrage if you have credit seize up because everyone was using debt to buy into the same thing that you're doing. You're, you're on the same side of the trade as everyone that's borrowing money. Mm -hmm. So everyone has to reverse it at the same time. So as it goes down, it's basically like a margin call, um, which is what happened in the in the um, 30s, which made it so bad, mm -hmm. is that there had to be deleveraging all through 29 to 32 because people had borrowed so much on credit. 